Hey y'all! Welcome to part one of a mini-series on combining some of the more basic techniques we've already talked about in previous videos into one large project. Let me start this by giving you a preview of the final project that we're going to be working on. This is the final project. This is a simple shelf. It's about 54 inches wide and it's made to be screwed to the wall on the studs. And this one inch dowel here is uh, removable and the whole purpose of this shelf is for my wife's weaving studio for her to be able to hang skeins of yarn over this dowel and remove the dowel to take down, change out yarn, grab the skein she's after, etc. Plus about a 10 inch wide shelf up here on the top just to store tools, bobbins, shuttles, etc. It's very simple construction as you can see. I'm going to be cutting it out of uh, 18 millimeter thick Baltic birch plywood. Uh, what I'm going to focus on today is cutting one of these corbels here. We're going to design the corbel to allow that dowel to just drop in place and let gravity hold it. And I want to introduce you to using guidelines for vector creation. So we'll go ahead and get out a SketchUp and go back over into Aspire. Now, even though I'm using Aspire version 10.018, this will also work identically in vCarve Desktop and vCarve Pro. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new file. And in my job setup, this will eventually be a double-sided job. So I'm going to go ahead and start it off as a double-sided job. Um, I've already got my width and X set here. The, my material is 19 and 3 quarter inches wide, 12 inches tall in Y. Now the, the thickness is 18 millimeters. That's what the Baltic birch I have is. So I need to set my Z thickness and that will be 18 millimeters but I'm going to use the built-in calculator to convert that to inches so to do that I'll add the asterisk then the letter I which tells Aspire or VCarve to convert to inches and then tap the equals button and there is the thickness of my material in inches I'm going to set my Z0 to the material surface both times. For layout purposes, I'm going to set my XY datum origin to the center here. And when I do my double-sided machining, I'll be flipping it end for end, horizontally. None of this matters as we will not be doing any 3D modeling. I'll go ahead and I'll select OK. We'll go ahead and we'll start out by drawing the, a basic rectangle to set the shape of the corbel. So I'll go into draw a rectangle and I'll want to anchor that rectangle by the center of the rectangle and I want the center of that rectangle to be on my X0, Y0. I want square corners. I will be modifying one corner later on. And I want the width in X to be 8.5 inches. And I want the height in Y to be 10 inches. She wants a fairly substantial shelf and a fairly substantial corbel. So we'll go ahead and create that. Then I'll close my draw rectangle window. Now I'm going to start by introducing, and that's one of the purposes for this video. I'm going to introduce the use of guidelines to help me lay out some circles here and make this that uh, angled 
cut here. And the easiest way to use a guideline is by using these scales along the side and along the top of the drawing area out here. We'll zoom in a little bit and I want to put a guideline right along this vector here. I want it sitting right on top of that vector. So what I'm going to do is I'll go straight over here to this scale, my vertical scale here, and I'll click and hold my left mouse button and drag a guideline right off of that scale over here onto the drawing area. I want it to be right on top of that vector. And you can see when I get there, my cursor is uh, left and right facing arrows, and I've got a position right underneath that. It's negative 4.25 inches. That's telling me that that's the position of that guideline that I'm dragging around here. Now, depending upon how far in or out you're zoomed, that guideline may or may not snap directly to that vector because it Vectric doesn't know what you want to do with this guideline. So what I have found is in cases where it doesn't line up directly over the vector I'm trying to snap to, if I snap down here at the corner, it automatically will snap right directly to this rectangular vector. So basically it's looking for the end of a vector to line itself up on. And it finds an endpoint down here on the bottom corner, and that's a good place for it to snap to. So that's what it'll try to do. Then I'll just let go of the left mouse button, and I have a vertical guideline along this left edge of my rectangle here. Something to pay attention to and watch out for is that if I get my cursor over here near this vector at all, you'll see my cursor changes to the left and right arrow. That's letting me know it's right over the top of a guideline. So now if I need to do something with this vector, I'll have to come out here where there is no guideline. Because if I get my cursor close to it, again, it thinks that I'm working with the guideline. Now there is a way to shut off the guides, and I'll get into that in a few minutes. The main reason I drug this guideline over here, even with this vector, is because I want to use it for a baseline. Looking back at our SketchUp drawing, we have the width of our corbel up here is much wider than down here. The width from here, this back edge of the corbel, to the front edge here is 6 inches. So what I'll want to do is I'll want to make a guideline over here 6 inches away from this back edge. So I can do this two ways. I can either move this guide or create a parallel copy of this guide 6 inches away from it. So let me show you how to do that because that's the way I'm going to go on this particular guideline. I'll just go ahead and put my cursor over the guideline, then right click. And that brings up the properties for this guideline. We can see right here the current position of the guide is at negative 4.25. If I look up here at my scale, we're to the left of the zero, four and a quarter inches. That's letting me know where it is. Now, I can do the math and figure out what position six inches away from here would be. Or I can just come down here below this line to create new parallel guide. Now right now absolute position is checked. What I want to do is create a new parallel guide relative to this one. I want it to be six inches away in the positive direction. So I'll just enter 6.0, one guide, and I'll create the new guide. And you can see a new guide has appeared over here, six inches away from this one. So I can close the properties form. 
So now I have my guide over here, and that's going to help me to draw my vector up in this direction. Now, I also want to guide up here towards the top, because I'm going to have to come down about an inch and a half, and then start that angled cut here. So, once again, I'll bring it down, bring a guide down here, and you see this one did finally snap to. I'll go ahead and snap to right here, to the corner, and put my guide even with the top. Now, because this is starting with an even number, and I'm going to be moving a fairly easy number here, I can just move this guide down an inch and a half, which would place this in a 3.5 inch position. Let me go ahead and right click. And I can move this guide to an absolute position of 3.5. Click apply and that guide moves down. So there are two ways there of putting a guide exactly where you need one. You can either move a guide or you can create a new parallel guide to put it in the position that you want. So we'll go ahead and close that one. This intersection means nothing. It's very easy to get confused when you see a lot of intersections around here. It's really easy to get confused when you have a bunch of guides out here. So there is a way of turning these off so that the guides are no longer visible. If, for example, I needed to modify this vector here, again, I can't do anything because the minute I get close to the vector, the software thinks that I want to work with the guide. Well, there's a way we can turn these guides on and off. And that is coming right up here to this corner where these two scales meet. This is a button. If I just click it, the guides are hidden. And now I can do whatever I'd like with this vector. And when I get my work done over here, I can come back over and turn the guides back on. They don't absolutely disappear. You can just hide them to do other work that you might need to do. Then turn them back on if you need to. I do need to do another guide here to help me in placing my two cutouts for the dowel. So I'll grab another one and bring it down here like so. And we have it snapped to the bottom of our vector here. Now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to place this two and a half inches up from the bottom. Now we're at negative five right now, so I'm going to move this up to negative two and a half. So I'll right click and I'll change the new position to negative 2.5. Click apply. My guide moves up and I can close it. Now what I'm going to need to do is I want to draw this curved area right here. Up at the top of the corbel, I'm going to draw that curve and then draw this curve here. So we go back over into Aspire and I'm going to create a circle and want my radius, excuse me, my diameter to be one inch. I want that dowel to fit down in to the socket or to the slot I mill for it and I want that curved area to match. I want it to have the same radius. So I'll go ahead and I want the center of that circle to be on this line right here. So I'll just click a circle. Go ahead and close my circle. And now I want to move this circle so that this edge is touching this intersection right here. So I'll zoom in 
After putting my circle into move and transform mode, I'll grab this edge right here and drag it straight over until it snaps to that guideline. Now I'm all set there. Well, now I no longer need this guide here. I now want to move it over to this side of the circle so I can place another circle down here. So I'll just put my cursor over that guide and we see how it uh, my cursor has changed to the left and right facing arrows. I'll click and hold and I'll drag this horizontally over to that edge of the circle and you see how it just snaps into place right there and let go. Now that gives me another edge to place another circle on. So I'll come back over here to my one inch circle and I'll just come down here and click close that go into move and transform again and now I want to zoom in up here to the top and drag it up till it snaps to that guide then come over here to the right grab it and move it straight across till it snaps to that guide so I have my two circles and uh, I'm ready to start connecting vectors and then trimming away so let me go ahead and turn off my guides for a minute and go into draw line polyline now the first thing I'm going to want to do is come over here to this center edge of this circle and it snaps into place and I'll click and drag my circle straight down at a 90 degree angle and connect it right there hit the space bar to end that line then come up here to this circle right here on the edge opposite of this one click bring a line down to the center of this one and that's it space bar to end that line now I'm going to close that and I'm going to turn my guides back on because what I want to do now is I want to find the location up here up in this area where I want the angle which will start here I need to figure out where I'm going to end it down in here so I want to move this guide up into that position and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag this guide up to the top of this circle and then I want it to be an inch and a quarter above the top of this circle so I'll right click this guide I'll create a new parallel guide and we'll put it an inch and a quarter above that circle click and there's my new guide up here now I can close this and I can draw my final two lines we'll go back over here into draw polyline and I want to go start at this edge right here of this circle click and go straight up 90 degrees to that intersection there and click again now I'm going to back out and I'm going to bring the line over here to where this guide meets this vector click again and now pull off and hit the space bar now I can close my polyline tool turn off my guides and now it's a simple matter of trimming so I'll get my trim tool and I'll eliminate that eliminate that and eliminate that and there is most of my corbel I know that looked a little bit confusing but keeping track of the lines moving them and eliminating them as needed just kinda gives you a little bit of a visual representation on where you're going to be drawing where you're going to be placing where you're going to be locating 
Now to finish up this drawing, I'll use my fillet tool. I'm going to use a normal fillet. I want a half inch radius. And I'll come up here to this corner. I do not want this to be a square corner. And I'll move into position until I get that little check mark. Click, and it applies my half inch radius to that corner. Same down here. I'll get that check mark, click, and apply it to that corner. Then down here at the bottom, I'll get my check mark, click, and there's my half inch radius there. Close my fillet tool. Now to all that remains, because I've done some snipping and trimming and everything, is to select all of the vectors, come over here to join, and I already have one closed vector. So, there is the drawing of my corbel. If I was only going to cut one of these corbels, I would be ready to go over to the tool paths tab, create a profile cutout tool path, save G code, and go out to the machine. But I'm going to be doing a few other things in this project. But for now, I think this is as good a place as any to go ahead and end this video. In the next video, we'll be adding a bitmap trace. We'll import some artwork. We'll trace the bitmap. We'll copy the whole corbel, add locating dowels for our double-sided machining. Then we can generate some G-code. There's what the top will look like. And there is the bottom. If you got anything at all out of this video, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow this series and uh, watch how I do the bitmap trace, then v-carve, then eventually take it outside and cut it out on the CNC router, I do hope you'll subscribe to my channel at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, today, on my YouTube channel. I'll be hosting a live Q&A where we'll get into further discussion about the guidelines or vector creation or anything else that I've shown in this video. That's, again, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, today on my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell right next to it. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video or whenever I go live. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch and y'all take care.